Hello everyone and welcome to this session on data modeling in Power BI. Now today we will discuss how to create relationships and different kind of data models within Power BI based on the structure of data you are importing. Okay, so what topics we are going to cover today? We are going to talk about different types of data modeling and the most important part and aspect of data modeling is the cardinality. The cardinality which you basically decide after reviewing the nature of data and after you imported it, what kind of cardinality you have to basically highlight, right? And there are different types of cardinalities which you might have heard earlier also if you are from PLC SQL background, uh, like one is to one, one is to many, etc. We will we will talk about that. Now, what are the different types of data modeling? Now, dimensional data modeling is one of the most popular and most, uh, you know, widely used uh, modeling. In dimensional data modeling, you have master data, uh, like for example, customer data, date, store data, product data. So these are like, you know, uh, less frequently changing data sets. So there is an organization right and you have set of customers their email id phone numbers etc that will change less frequently as compared to the sales transactions because transactions are happening every day every minute so sales is a more fast changing data set in dimensional modeling which is in the terminology of data uh, is also called as a fact and customer store product which are like more of static data and no, uh, le less changeable data is sometimes called a dimension. So this is a typical dimensional data model which is typically used uh, sometimes, right? And then there is another model which is relational model. This is a typical model which we have been using in database design like, you know, primary key, foreign key relationships. So for example, you have a customer who has purchased a product so probably he might have the customer might have the details of the product which he has purchased and you will make a join between customer and product table and even uh, you can make a join between product or product type or customer or product type. So customer table will also have a key to the product type. So this is less uh, conducive for reporting but it is more of a transactional uh, relational model but of course this is also feasible. But from the Power BI perspective, when we talk about reporting and visualization, this is the most extensively used dimensional data model. And this is what we are going to see in our example now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you certain data sets. First, we will prepare and uh, create certain upper uh, data sets. And then we will import in our sample Power BI file. And then slowly, slowly, we will create the relationships. Now, one important thing which you need to understand that in Power BI, if you go to Power BI, there is an option that that Power BI auto detect new relationships after data is loaded and import relations from the data source on first load. So, for example, if you are importing the data from a database where you have already defined the primary keys and the foreign key relationships. So uh, that is the first option which Power BI will auto detect. And secondly, if suppose you are importing two different kind of data sets, one is Excel, one is CSV. And if Power BI detects a common column, key columns, it will auto detect a relationship, which you can go and later change, modify, manage in your relationship uh, menu, manage relationship menu in Power BI, which I'm going to show you. Okay, so if I open a Power BI and this is where the option lies, go to file, go to options and setting, options, data load and these are the two options which are by default checked. You can uncheck it and, auto and manually prepare relationships. There is no limitation to that but if you uh, keep it checked, then Power BI will do its job to detect the relationships.
okay now coming to the next important factor cardinality now before i start playing around with my data and start showing you certain relationships it's very important to understand these four types of cardinalities one is many to one right so basically many to one means that many orders contain data of one customer so per order one customer is there so from customer to order or product or delivery address it's a one to many relationship and from the other side from order to customer perspective it's a many to one relationship okay second other uh, cardinality is one is to one one is to one relationship is only applicable when you are saying it's, it's an extension of the current table so for example in one table you have employee details and you are extending the details of the employee in another table like employee address employee id so that is like one is to one there is no multiple records of a single employee in the address table only one employee id exists right now one is to many as i said is the reverse side of many is to one so in customer table only one customer record exists per customer and one customer can place many orders for multiple products and can also have multiple delivery addresses so that way this is a typical one is to many relationship we will be seeing this example also in our sample data set and last is the many to many relationship now many to many is a very typical example so which i'm going to show you practi practically and in our case we will see that like for example you have placed an order for a particular product uh, you know but there are multiple fulfillments which has happened so suppose you made order for 10 products but at the back end when the company is fulfilling it is first fulfilling the first two products then the rest three so basically you the fulfillment is happening in batches so one order id might have a multiple fulfillments for the same order id so there will be a multi many to many relationship which i'll show you practically so now with this background let's start importing our data now the first important thing which we need to import is the master data so first i'll import all my master dimensions which are uh, which i'm going to you know use in my example so first is the customers table customers data so this is the customer details like customer key prefix first name last name birth date marital status and gender some redundant columns are also present but we'll remove it now my customer data is loaded now today's session is all about this section of modeling so we will keep our focus over here okay now some columns probably some blank columns are there i can select them and say delete from model yes okay so now this is my customers data with the relevant columns and the key per customer customer key now there is no relationship in this model right now right because only single table is there and the associate data is only imported now let me also import my another important master table is the products select the product data product key product sub category product sku product name model name product description color size so just see all the relevant information only specific to the product is available so i'll import it okay now see there is no relationship between product and customers directly because until unless a customer makes an order places an order for a particular product there is no join right so now between these two tables the most important now another table which will now make sense is the sales order table sales table now i am assuming 
that power bi have auto detected the relationship now you can see that because i have already uh, ticked that checkbox now let's see what power bi what relations power bi has auto detected let's first say, check the relation between customer and sales i'll double click this uh, join now what it has done is it has created a join of many to one between sales and customer so what does that mean is that one customer has uh, can uh, place many orders right and that is that it has detected by the quality of the data and the data sampling which power bi has done you can also reverse this relationship here i can select customers and i can select sales now it has become one to many so that you can also do manually so that is what i said whatever power bi is detected it is up to the discretion of power bi internal uh, configuration and algorithm but you can go and change it so this is now you can make this is by default active so we want to keep it active one customer many sales orders cross filter direction means that only from customers to sales is the filter applicable not reverse i'll come to this with my another example but first let's change the relationship so one is to many means from one customer and many sales orders similarly let's see what has happened at the product side of the relationship similarly power bi many sales orders for one product you can for simplicity sake you can say products sales product key is the join now just focus one more thing please uh, also see the co the column on which the join is is the grade column grade out column product key is also here and product key is also there and it is what we wanted so one is to many relationship from product to sales table and active now looks fine this is something which is looking logical and probably now we can proceed further to create a report now let me explain the cross filtering with an example now for example i want to check in a report that what is the count of products which uh, which a particular customer has ordered okay so what i'll do is i'll select the product count of product name now if you see and for each customer in front of each customer name the count is coming as 293 293 it is getting repetitive because because there is a one way filter direction filter between customers and sales and sales and products right so this join is single sided it means that from customer to product you can't find a relationship because it's a single side cross filter right what does this if i change it to both it means that it is equal to a join between product and sales and every product detail now is appended to the sales table so if i want to make you visualize this you need to go here i'll first open my sales table we can also open it here let's make click it is okay now if i click okay you can see the single arrow is changed to double arrow it means it's a it's a both side filter so when you say a both side filter it means that implicitly within power bi you can imagine that all the product columns now will get appended because of both ways filter you have applied and if you go to your report now see the change of the numbers now 40 20 so the total count of products across all my customers come out to be 293 now the report looks uh, correct if i change the relationship from back to single between product and sales then you can't make a join between customers and product basically you can't derive the product count from the product table see this if you have to live with it then you would have to go to the sales table get the product key and get the va value of count of product key but that is not correct okay 
So if you want a report in which you want the count of product name and even if you want a count of distinct product name, so this will not come correctly. You would have to go and change the direction of the filter, which is from single to both. So this is a typical example there where you want to use a two directional filter. Now let's proceed further and import other data set in order to give you show you another example. Now I want to show you an example of one is to one. So I have another table which is called customer details. So the key in this table is again customer key, but only email address, annual income, total children, education level, etc. Other details of the customer is there. So I'm loading the customer details. Now you see it has auto detected a one is to one relationship. Now what is the meaning of one is to one means one customer key only has one entry in customer details. There is no multiple entry. So if you click this button, it's a one is to one and the cross filter can be both or single doesn't matter because one customer will have only one value. You can make this as active. Okay. And if you go to the customer report table, you can now easily associate a email address with the first name. You will get one is to one record. So now you can see that with one is to one relationship with the first name, I have associated the email ID and for each email ID, there is a associated first name with that. So this is an example of one is to one relationship. So in this example, what we have explained is that for each customer, there is an associated customer detail right uh, so you have the first name email address education level homeowner occupation and total children count so in this report what we have done is uh, if you click over here so the first name and the email address okay so there's a one is to one relationship and then and if you drag the customer key Uh, report takes time to render and even if you can so this is the reporting output you have the customer key first name associated email address and the count of product names uh, which the customer has ordered now this is an example of one is to one now I want to show you an example of many to many now for that, I'll import my fulfillment data set. Okay, now in my fulfillment data set, there is a column for order number. So basically what I'll do is I'll drag order number from here to here. Okay. So now what has um, a Power BI detected? I'll do one thing. I'll select sales over here, fulfillment over here and order number to order number. Okay. So it's a many to many relationship. So it means that per order I have created multiple batches to fulfill that particular order. Now many to many relationship is a definitely a candidate for both ways cross filter detection uh, direction but you can you can check that but definitely uh, Power BI shows a warning that this relationship has cardinality to many to many and this should only be used if it is expected that neither column contains unique values. Okay. So we know that fact. That's why we are accepting this relationship as many to many.
because we know there are multiple order numbers over here in the sales table which are mapped to the multiple order numbers in the fulfillment table we'll click ok now you want to keep uh, the uh, direction as both ways or one direction that is up to you the way you want to uh, map the report so I can double click over here and you can even click so now you can select from which way single filter you want from fulfillment to sales or sales to fulfillment I'll prefer sales to fulfillment and click OK okay now we have our all our different kind of relationships over here uh, which we have tried to shortlist one to many many to one one to one which is uh, this example and uh, many to many now if i show you further relationships which you can keep on adding like for example i have uh, uh, the example of territories Now, in which particular territory the sales was done, so I can map it over here. Okay, so now it's a typical one is to many relationship because territory is my master table uh, where I have a static list of continent, country, region, and it is mapped to the uh, territories which are for in which my orders have been placed so it's a typical one is too many so that way you know you can keep on adding data then uh, you have uh, details of returns now this is another transactional table which is about the orders which have been returned rather than being you know returned by the customers so you have a product key and so automatically power bi has detected a relationship between the product key and the product uh, table right and even if you can join the territory key in which territory the return has happened right so mostly the most common relationship which you will observe is the one is to many because as i told earlier the most common relational model is the dimensional model uh, the static data the slow changing dimensions the SCDs are the master tables and the most frequent changing are the fact tables so if I talk about a typical dimensional model the fulfillment table sales table and the territory table uh, sorry uh, the fulfillment table sales table and my returns table are the fact tables of my data model okay so with this I hope you had a fair understanding of how you create relational models uh, dimensional models in power bi and how you can leverage those for your reporting needs with this I'll connect with you in my next session on power bi and I hope you had a great learning session Thank you. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.